A Samaritan woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me some water to drink. The woman said, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, for water? Jesus replied, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give will never be thirsty again. The Book of John, Chapter 4 They say your life could change in an instant. And mine did when a Jewish man asked me, a Samaritan, for a drink. I have been drinking from the same well for more years than I could count. For me, change seemed impossible. I didn't even want it. But the well always left me thirsty. So I came back to it over and over when no one else could see me. I always came alone. The truth was, I had no husband. He told the truth, the real part of my life, the one I tried to hide, but he looked right through me and met me where I was. He wasn't ashamed of me. He wasn't angry. In my life, I thought I'd experienced love. I, I thought I was pretty good at finding it too. I didn't even know what love was. On an ordinary day, I went to draw water and had a thirst quenched I didn't even know I had. I don't know if they'll believe me, but I gotta try. I gotta tell them. I found the Messiah. Rather, he found me. Good morning, Adventure. Hey, thanks for joining us online. If you are home, feel free to clap your hands. You can stomp your feet. You can just pat the desk if you're watching on a laptop or at the couch. And uh, let's praise the Lord this morning. God, I'm running for your heart, running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day, till I am a soul on fire, till I am a soul on fire.
my life. running after us. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. My life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sing that one more time. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. My life laid down, surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Pray with me. Father God, we praise you, Lord. We say thank you. Thank you for running after us. It's so easy, Lord, to be running in the wrong direction, but you're right there. Lord, turn us around today. Help us to see you. Help us to help us to find you and put you back in the middle of our lives, Lord, at the center. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name. All my life. everyone. I love to be able to get up here and say hello to you wherever you are out there. I hope you had a very blessed week. I love to remind you that we're a family adventure and you can connect with us um, one of three ways. Um, you can text us at 602-775-6398. You can email us at office at the com, and you can always go to our website at the com. You can get our prayer requests to us. You can get your um, praises to us and you can also do online tithing as well on our website. So let me pray for you. Dear Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to spend time um, to gather in your name. We love and praise you. I just pray for each person here, each person out there, each family, Lord. Bless them, protect them, guide them, um, and fill their hearts with your word, Lord, that we may be one together in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Venture Church. I'm Pastor Joel and once again I am thrilled that you would join us for worship today. We're in the midst of a series called Unhinged. We've been exploring what the Bible has to say about mental illness and mental health. Well this morning I wanted to give you a perspective on mental health from a mental health professional. Bethany Wilcox is a member of our church a friend of our church. You see her here regularly leading worship. She's involved on our leadership teams, a real asset to our church family. But she's also a trained therapist. She spends her days helping people with some really tough issues. I've asked her to come and share with you today from a, from a therapist's perspective what God has to say to us about mental health issues. She'll be sharing today a, a teaching on how to both develop and strengthen your own mental health. It's going to be a great, inspiring, and wonderful day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back here next week. We'll be finishing up the series, but how about before we begin, we ask the Lord to bless our time together. Father, thank you for meeting our every need. 
We love you and we trust you. And we ask that your mercy and grace, your wisdom, would would speak to our hearts and to our minds this day. Bless Bethany and the words that she shares with us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you guys, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Well, hello, Venture friends. I'm very excited to be here today to talk about mental health, and I just want to give a public thank you to Pastor for doing a series on mental health. That's something that's not necessarily done a lot in churches, and I just am so grateful that he's done this. And I believe that this whole series that he's doing can bring some understanding and hope around this whole issue of mental health. Let's begin by learning a little bit about the effects of COVID-19 on mental health. The CDC, as well as Mayo Clinic, has found that since 2020, um, COVID has caused us to have severe alterations in our daily routines. It's caused an increase in reliance on social media and news outlets, It's increased our financial pressures. It's brought on social isolation and boredom. COVID has increased our experience of loss through the death of friends and family. People are worried about getting sick. They're wondering how long this pandemic can last and if the different strains of it will continue. They fear losing jobs and fear will our country and even our world collapse. Surveys show that there's an increase in the United States, both of adults and adolescents who report symptoms of stress, anxiety, and depression during the pandemic, very different than before the pandemic. Suicide attempts and completions, sadly, have increased. And people have also turned to alcohol and drugs Um, to try to help them with their depression and anxiety, which actually those chemicals increase depression and anxiety. Our population has gained weight, as food is a very quick way to self-soothe. And there's also been an increase in the use of pornography in an attempt to soothe the boredom, stress, and anxiety. Doctors are also seeing an increase in their practices of people coming in with depression and anxiety. So I think the message to all of us is that our mental health is very apt to change. That whether or not we've had issues with mental health before doesn't mean that we won't. And the things that impact our mental health, like our life stressors, our environment can change, Certainly what we've inherited from our families, our physical health, all of these things can impact our mental health. The Bible refers to us as a whole person made up of the spirit and the soul housed in the body. And there's a number of scriptures that we won't be turning to today, but that talk about the various parts of who we are. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Matthew 10.28 and Hebrews 4.12 all talk about the various parts of who we are. Having good mental health is not about doing just one thing in one area. It's about seeing ourselves and others as a whole of these three parts created by God and doing things in each of those areas, spirit, soul, and body, to bring balance and wholeness into our lives. What's the biology of our bodies that contribute to our mental health? There are neurotransmitters, also known as brain chemicals, and hormones involved with depression, anxiety, and other mental health diagnoses. Some of these you may have heard of. Dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, glutamate, and cortisol. So what we know from science now is when those brain chemicals are out of balance, we can experience schizophrenia, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, anxiety, and many more mental health issues. 
we can develop sleep problems, the ability to turn off our thoughts. Our appetite changes. Our mood can change. We have an inability to concentrate or enjoy maybe things that we used to enjoy. Panic attacks, rage, hallucinations, just to name a few of the the ramifications of these neurotransmitters not being in balance. Well, by the way, if you're experiencing any of these emotional system uh, symptoms or other things that negatively impact your life or the life, uh, the lives of those around you, it's time to seek help. So, where do these chemical imbalances come from? Studies have found that brain chemical imbalances are highly inheritable. So if family members have had mental health problems, it can be passed genetically down through the generations, just like hair color and eye color. When I'm doing initial assessments in my office with people, I will often ask them about their family history of mental illness or mental problems, parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, grandparents, to begin assessing if there's a genetic component of the mental stressors that are involved. Another cause of physical and mental health issues is our childhood experiences and environment. The Center for Disease Control has researched and developed a test that you can find online to measure the experiences in childhood that would indicate a greater likelihood of mental health problems and physical problems later in life. It's called ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences. And there is about 10 things on this ACEs test, physical abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, physical neglect and emotional neglect, a family member who is depressed or diagnosed with another mental illness, a family member who is addicted to alcohol or another substance, a family member who's in prison, witnessing a mother being abused, and losing a parent to death, separation, or divorce. Each one of these indicators gets a score of one. And the higher the score, say four to 10, for instance, the more likely you are to have physical and emotional struggles. The CDC found that children's developing brains and central nervous systems are profoundly affected by ACEs, and they are the root cause of many chronic illnesses, most mental illness, and most violence. Mental health issues, trauma, adverse childhood experiences often push people to self-medicate, understandably so, and they'll do so with food, drugs, drinking, excessive shopping, excessive working out, excessive spending, gambling, porn, gaming, hoarding, etc. It's that instant relief, that exhale that we get from those things that we're doing to self-soothe and that lead people to continue these behaviors. Sadly, mental health issues are often misunderstood in church. People are blamed or are given pat answers like, well, what did you do wrong? You know, if you prayed more, if you came to church more, if you worshiped or read your Bible more, um, you could just snap out of this. And um, there's this judgment. Surely good Christians that had enough faith would not struggle with their mental health. And I believe personally that the enemy loves this. The confusion, misunderstanding, and the judgment keeps people isolated, feeling shamed, feeling fearful, feeling condemned, and it can cause the mental health issues to be worsened. What's encouraging is that the Lord knows all about biology and mental illness and the effect of adverse childhood experiences and trauma. He knows that it's a physical problem, 
not a spiritual problem. He knows it's a physical problem, not a lack of prayer or a lack of trust in him. He always knows our backstory, which is very encouraging. In Romans 8, 1, and Romans 8, 38 and 39, say, says that there is no condemnation in him and that nothing can separate us from his love. He is very kind. Pastor Joel, in his previous two messages on mental health, has done a wonderful job giving examples of the mental health struggles of people in the Bible and others. And thankfully, Scripture records these struggles for our encouragement to know that mental health problems do not make us unacceptable to the Lord at all. And you can find a lot more information because there's a lot more to know on the biology of, of mental health on places like YouTube and TED Talks and certainly in books. There are times that we just cannot fix ourselves. In fact, if we were able to fix ourselves, we probably would have already done it, right? Please know that taking medication, going into a hospital behavioral health program or in for therapy or going to a community support group is not sinful and it is not showing a lack of faith. In fact, it's the opposite. We have faith that God can use things to help us and to heal us. In fact, it's about being responsible for our health. There is absolutely nothing noble about white knuckling it till we get through it or cycling, getting better and worse and better and worse. It is very noble to be humble and admit that we're struggling and get help. After all, the Lord does not say when we die, welcome, good and faithful servant. You never got on medication, never went to therapy, and never went to a group. Come on in. That is not anything to do with how we get to heaven. So let's talk about some of the wonderful things, especially in our generation, in our time, that we have that the Lord has helped people develop for helping us. Medications. Medications for mental health are like medication for any other physical malady. Will they likely have side effects? Yes. Just like other medications for other things, from antibiotics to blood pressure to heart medications, medications tend to have side effects, some more severe than others. We just have to ask ourselves if the side effects are worse than the mental health problem. Are the side effects manageable? And will the side effects subside? And that's true with a lot of antidepressants. You can have side effects for a couple of weeks and then they subside. Last year, after chemotherapy, I was put on a medication that I'll have to be on for five years. And one of its big side effects is weight gain. It kind of shuts down the entire metabolism. So I weigh more than I've ever weighed in my life. But I have to say, hmm, weight gain? or cancer, think I'll take the weight gain. You may have to try a few different medications until you get the right one for you. Same as any other medication. So seeing mental health medication like we see other medications can take some of the fear and unrealistic expectations away from getting help. So where do we go to be evaluated? for mental health me medication. Medication for mental illness is generally prescribed by a psychiatrist or a psychiatric nurse practitioner or a primary care doctor. It may be prescribed for a short course, depending on what's going on, or a longer course. A naturopath can also be quite successful in treating some mental health issues with supplements and various other natural treatments. Medication, though, is rarely the whole answer. 
numerous studies have found that a combination of med- medication and therapy provide the greatest results. Here's this spirit, soul, and body combination again. So if medication is needed, doctors or nurse practitioners prescribe those medications, and then therapists do the therapy or the counseling. Counseling sessions can be obtained as part of insurance benefits, employee assistance programs, or self-pay at community mental health clinics, hospitals, or by therapists in private practice. The development of trauma clearing methods have just been so exciting over the past several years due to MRIs and various other brain scan technology. We've understood more about how trauma affects the brain and where it sits in the brain, and we've developed methodologies to help clear that trauma. It is really amazing at how much we can help people with trauma now that we couldn't have helped very well maybe 30 years ago. Other benefits of therapy is that it can help lower stress, it can help improve relationships, it can increase coping strategies, and decrease self-destructive behaviors, just to name a few. So what are some other things that we can do that will help us stay strong with our mental health? One of my favorites that has a lot of research behind it is developing healthy breathing habits. I love it when science shows how God created our bodies to support our health. What we know is that if we will use our full lung capacity while breathing, it'll stimulate relaxation, It will lower the heart rate and the blood pressure. Isn't that amazing? It will calm the mind and relax the body, all with breathing, which, by the way, we have to do anyway. So if we learn how to breathe correctly, we can help our bodies tremendously uh, manage strength, or I'm sorry, stress and anxiety. Again, online and in books, you can find many forms of breath work from the simple to com- to the complex. But I want to demonstrate a couple this morning just to um, give you something to think about, and I encourage you to do it with me. So an example of a simple one is breathing in very slowly, very deeply, and breathing out very, sl- very slowly and very deeply. In other words, exhaling every last part of the breath that you've inhaled. So it would go something like this. Exhale all the way out, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out until you don't have any breath anymore. The important thing about the exhale is that it releases carbon dioxide, which can negatively affect our nervous system, respiratory, and cardiac functioning. Oftentimes with anxiety, we take very slow to all breaths, and that increases heart rate, blood pressure, all of that. If we choose to get in a practice of inhaling very slowly and as deeply as we can, and then exhaling very slowly, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out, all the way out. It calms everything down. Another breath practice causes us to think a little more, and it's called four, seven, eight. And it means inhaling for four, holding for seven, exhaling for eight. So it goes like this. We inhale to the count of four. Hold it. Exhaling. When if you still have breath, you exhale, 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 until it's all gone. Doing four repetitions of the four, seven, eight resets the brain. A lot of research on that one out there. There are many very helpful free apps that you can download on your phone or your computer that guide you through breath work. 
There's two, um, there's more, but there's two that I wanted to mention today that are Christian based. It's called Reflect and Abide. So you can load a bunch of these apps on your phone or your computer, try them all, see what works for you, and then use them on a repeated basis. Another thing that we can do just through the course of our day, which has been shown to be very, very happy, uh, helpful, is something called tapping, faster emotional freedom technique. Now, this was developed in 1980 by Dr. Roger Callahan and later by Gary Craig, who was a student of his. And what they found is that it was balancing the body's energy. It uses the meridian system that the Chinese medicine has used for thousands of years, typically with acupuncture, except there are no needles. I'm for that. The basic premise is that if you're really upset or really anxious about something, you do these tapping practices on specific points of your meridian system, and it will clear the very... Um, difficult feelings that you're having. Now, a lot of this sounds like a, like it's woo woo of some sort, like, eh, I don't know, that seems a little weird. And so rest assured that, um, it's very effective. Harvard actually has researched it and found that tapping lessens the fear and stress response. Also, Dr. Dawson Church and his team found in their research that cortisol levels are decreased between 25 and 50% as a result of tapping. Our bodies, it's interesting, begin to respond to this well because if we practice the breath work and the various parts of tapping, that our body remembers this like muscle memory, like if you play an instrument, the muscle, mis- uh, muscle memory that comes, so they, they have uh, done studies on this, and if you're sitting in a difficult meeting and you just start thinking about tapping, your body will actually respond to it and calm down. It's really quite fascinating. So um, Robert Smith, Rick Ortner, O-R-T-N-E-R, and many others have websites and YouTubes showing how to do tapping. It's free. Easy and very effective. Let's talk about taking a break. And this, of course, you've probably all heard before, is taking a break from news, social media, and other forms of negative input in your life. You can try doing 15 minutes less a day. Or you can uh, go cold turkey. Either way, we need to take a break. What we feed on affects our health, whether it's food for the body, soul, spirit. That's the reason in Philippians 4, 8, it talks about whatsoever things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely. That's what to focus on. The Lord knew way back then that um, what what we feed our brains is going to definitely impact our bodies and our mental health. The next one is exercise. You've probably heard of this one too. And normally it's like, there's a groan through the audience about this. So the good news is that it's not about going to the gym and becoming a bodybuilder and competing. It's about just moving. Research has shown over and over that just moving will be beneficial to our mental health. It's not uh, running a marathon. It's just walking la- ra- laps around your house or it's just walking through the parking lot. It's moving throughout the day as opposed to being sedentary. So that's good news. It doesn't take a whole lot to help us emotionally and mentally. Then there's other forms of self-soothing. You know, we talked before about self-soothing being like excessive spending, drinking, drugs, pornography, gaming, where there's other simple things that we can do that will give us that that we're needing. One, believe it or not, is simply chewing gum. Chewing gum helps the brain to be more relaxed. It's that rhythmic motion that helps bring relaxation. Pick up an old hobby. 
or start a new one. Read an actual book instead of on your phone. Read the Word. Watch something that's funny. You know, laughter is a good medicine. Or something that's very calming. Another thing that I just love, and I practice this one a lot myself, is something called healing frequencies. It's 432 hertz. And what we have found through medical research is that those frequencies, if we listen to them, begin to heal processes in our body. And so on YouTube, you can find healing frequencies. Another one is binaural beats, B-I-N-A-U-R-A-L, same thing, binaural beats and healing frequencies. They're using this for Parkinson's. They're using it for cancer, heart issues, all kinds of things. And it's simply listening to music in the 432 hertz. One of the cool things that we have found is that Hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the monks in Benedictine monasteries or Gregorian monasteries, they have been chanting, in other words, um, doing a cappella hymns about the Lord for hundreds of years, and they're all in the 432 hertz. God is never doing one thing at a time. When I heard that, it was like, Lord, you're so kind, even hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So on YouTube, I just search Gregorian chants. Um, and it's all these monks who are singing a cappella in harmony. It is beautiful. And I've noticed that it relaxes my animals too. In fact, I was doing that while I was putting this together. It's a wonderful thing to experience. Another thing that you may be aware of is essential oils. There are some of those that are very relaxing. Lavender is one. Sometimes just doing some simple stretches. You can even find simple stretches on YouTube to do. It's all free. Getting outside, letting the sun hit your head for about 20 minutes, it really helps with depression, being out. And I think, you know, it goes back to the garden, digging in the dirt. You know, it's very therapeutic. God um, designed those things just from the beginning of time to help us. By the way, the most peaceful color is green. Look how much of our earth is green. Going for a slow drive, not driving like your hair is on fire, but a slow drive. Listening to music, worship music, anything that's calming, journaling. Journaling is another thing that's had a lot of study behind it. Writing things out gives the brain ability to process decreasing stress. Another thing is com connecting with people who are positive. So over FaceTime, Google Meet, Zoom, a call, a text, connecting with people. And one of the, the primary ways that we can get connected with really healthy people is not only... Um, people in church, if they, I mean, not everybody in church is in that, but a lot of people in church are very supportive and loving. But in online or in-person support groups, just to name a few, Emotions Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, Celebrate Recovery, Codependence Anonymous, Gamblers Anonymous, Sex Addicts Anonymous, Gamers Anonymous. There are groups for anxiety, depression, blended families, bipolar disorder, loneliness. In other words, if you've got it, there's probably a support group for it. Thank God. And because of COVID, you don't have to go to one necessarily. You can uh, go online, which is really, really terrific. Going in person is wonderful as well. Get positive support. Listen to your friends and family, and if they are telling you that they think you need to see a doctor or go to counseling, you probably need to see a doctor or go to counseling. Give to others. It's another thing that we can do to help with our mental health. This can be simple or something that requires more effort. We can write a card. We can send an uplifting text. We can tell people how much they mean to us. Or the more effort ones, go get grocery for, get groceries for someone. Bring over a meal. Bring over coffee. That helps when we give to others. 
Just a couple more. One is keeping a routine. Going to bed at the same time, getting up at the same time, eating at the same time, going to church, going to activities every week, every other week about the same time. The routines and the rhythms daily established are very stabilizing for us emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And then making good sleep is a priority. There's neurotransmitters that, pro- that are produced only when we're in deep levels of sleep. Sleep deprivation is linked to an increase in hypertension, diabetes, obesity, depression, heart attack, stroke, anxiety. So sleep is a big, big deal. So maybe we need to decrease our screen time an hour before we go to sleep. Decrease caffeine, alcohol, high energy TV or games so that our body can get into that natural rhythm of winding down at the end of the night. And then lastly, the four chemicals that we need to be aware of and pay attention to. Caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, and sugar. It almost sounds like a cheer, doesn't it? Caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, and sugar. Just kidding. But those are the four things that we need to be aware of because of how they affect our body. So caffeine, Harvard did a study a number of years ago that looked at people with anxiety and how they react to caffeine and people without anxiety and how they react to caffeine. And what they found is that people with anxiety react to caffeine much more strongly than people that don't have anxiety. Typically, when someone comes in with high anxiety in my office, I ask them to experiment and get off of caffeine. And though it is very, very hard and it takes a while, they all report. I don't think I've ever had one that didn't report that they couldn't believe how much their anxiety was upped by the caffeine. So when I say that, some people go, well, what's the point? What's the point of drinking decaf? Because I'll talk about decaf coffee. And so I will say it tastes the same and it won't wreck you. How about that? That's the difference. So usually with caffeine, we have about a 20-minute high up. And then we start going down. And then what do we want to do? Drink more caffeine. And then we get about 20 minutes and it comes down. So we're always on that sort of emotional roller coaster with caffeine. Nicotine, it gives us that relaxation, that exhale, and then the craving cycle starts again. And when we're craving something, what happens? We get irritable, we can get, we can get really distracted, all kinds of things. So there's the roller coaster again. Alcohol, people will often use it to relax and try to go to sleep, but study after study has proven that alcohol interrupts the normal sleep cycle. So where they're trying to use alcohol to self-medicate, maybe to go to sleep, it actually does the opposite. And then sugar, here we are on the roller coaster again. Sugar gives us about 20 minutes of up, and then we come down and we want more sugar, and there we are. So I'd like to close by reading Psalm 34, 17 and 18. Psalm 34, 17 and 18. It says, The Lord hears His people when they call to Him for help. He rescues them from all of their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Mental health struggles are represented pretty well by brokenheartedness and being crushed. They are really crushing. The Lord sees and hears and has given wisdom to those creating medicines and therapeutic techniques. He uses others' gifts to help us in friendships, in support meetings, and in churches. He uses a variety of people, places, and things to scoop us up and bring healing and hope. May we all commit to humbly admitting that we're struggling and seeking and receiving his help. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, that you are so well acquainted with how we struggle with our mental health, 
And Lord, that you were not ashamed of us. And you were very touched by how we suffer and struggle. So Lord, I pray that we would stop white knuckling it, that we would stop having the cycles that hurt us and our family and friends, and that we would just be able to receive help from you, from people, places, and things that you have put to help us. So God, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tenderness toward us. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you.